I sent out the email and the text today that, you know, just as a reminder of the, of the comment that I had made this past Sunday, y'all, I, I am so burdened, not just for Macedonia, but, but for the church. I have some things I shared in the interview with, with Frank, and, you know, I'm just burdened for the church. And, and you know, we see, you know, some churches are, are beginning to thrive. Some never ceased thriving. They, they just continue to move on. Um, and, you know, but for us, what are we to do? What are some things that we need to do? We, you know, we see so many of our, of our young adults and, and their families who, are, who are, are not a part of the church. And, and you know, I, I can't help but believe that it is simply, it is simply, y'all know, that everything that we do, we are habitual people. We're, we're driven by habit. You know, that's what we do. And when we went all of almost a year of, of not, of off and on having church and doing different things and not having Sunday school, just having worship, and, you know, folks got into a, they just got into a different habit. And we've got to help them see the error of that way. Because my friends, just because they had all of those 21-day opportunities to develop those new habits does not mean that those habits are right. Um, you know, I smoked cigarettes from the time I was 12 to the time I was 28. And then I quit. And then 11 years later, I started back. That habit was just as bad and nasty 11 years later as it was when I quit the 11 years before. Okay? It's the same thing. Nothing... You know, it doesn't change the fact of, of, of that. But tonight, I kind of laid this thing out in goals because I knew there's no way we can cover all of this tonight. There's absolutely no way that we can cover everything. But, you know, I, I guess I want to just hush for a moment. And, you know, y'all know my heart. You hear me preach on Sunday mornings. You know my heart. You know the passion and the burden that I have for us and for our community. And... Let me hear, are any of y'all truly concerned? Would you like to voice a way that you are concerned? Somebody just open it up and get us started tonight. And let's, let's talk. Let's talk about this. Who? Come on. Surely somebody else has got to be hurting over the condition of the church, not just Macedonia, but you, we see it overall. You hear it. Does it not hurt you? That that we know? Oh my goodness, well, really? I see it. I see it. I know the people are. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, Connie. Bill will turn you on. Oh gosh. I see it. I mean, I was just talking with someone today that I told them, you need to be here. Your children need to be here. And that person said, yes, I know I need to be here. I know my children need to be here. And I, that's my unspoken request tonight. So um, I realize it. Right. If nobody else does, I do. Right. Another thing I, I've heard, some people say, yeah, I've heard different, well, not in our church necessarily, but people talk about, you know, not people not coming, they said, well, they go to ball games. They go to other places, but they don't come to church. If you can go out there and not be scared you're going to catch anything, you know, then why can't you come to church? You know, I've heard that. Some different, a lot of people have made that comment. So, Anybody else? That has something to do with our faith, David. <laughs> <laughs> I said that has something to do with your faith. I meant, where is your faith? It's if you do you not think God's in this in this building tonight to protect you? I mean, sure you might get COVID, but you know you've got to have faith that He's going to get you through it. Right. And if He doesn't, it could have been your time to go. I mean, it, no, I won't say it could be, and it was your time to go. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you, thank you, Dennis. All right, anyone else before I move into some things I'm going to share? I think a lot of us are using it as an excuse. 
not the sum. Okay. That I think that's, that's something I think we're all guilty of. David, I think too, um, I don't know why a lot of people don't, I sit around and think about it a lot, but I think too then we're held accountable for living the life let them see. Because I know like with Judith and Jalen, it's like, you know, they've come faithful and stuff, but then they're always questioning, you know, there's nobody our age that comes and, and whatever. And it's like I told them, I said, you know, we got to be the ones to stand up and, and, and show them the way. Right. And I think we fail in that a lot. Amen. Any, anyone else before I move? Daniel? So, I think it's important for us to keep our focus on God. And, you know, we become overwhelmed with distractions, things that, that we have no control over. And they're all distractions of the earth. Well, the earth is not ours to worry about. Our focus is on an eternal home in heaven. How do we get there? Just like Gene said, you got to focus on God and spread that by doing God. Yep. You, can't, you can't be consumed in all the distractions, worried about why this is happening, why that's happening. That, that's fine. All we can do is ourselves, our focus on God, and let that lead our path. Right. The rest is set in place. And, and if I may build on that, Daniel, doing the good works that God the Father has given us to do, that is what we're called to do. That is the things we're called to do. Anybody else? How do we go from here to get the ones, the younger group back that we lost during COVID? And this is going to be a process, and that's why I said we cannot cover it all tonight. Tonight I'm going to begin at prayer, and we're going to, we're going to focus our thoughts on what is prayer and how, what kind of prayer do we need to be praying. Um, we've got to get very specific. Does anybody else have any comments now? Because I'm about to get wound up. I mean, ain't no need me lying about it. Okay, it's my age group that ain't here. I got two youngins, but most people my age ain't got no youngins, so it's my age group that ain't here. We're using COVID as an excuse that they're not here. They wouldn't be here regardless if COVID had happened or not. We're not teaching them. We haven't been taught. They're not here because why should they be here? And it's like Judith and Jalen saying, why other people, they don't know. We're not teaching them. We're just saying, oh, you should be there. But then we don't tell them nothing when they get here. All right. Um, and, you know, I want to go back. to I'm, I'm going to build just a little bit on what Kara said. And I'm going to, and, and y'all have heard me confess this before. Um. I thank the Lord for second chances with my two boys, okay? Because I did it wrong. We did it wrong. We did it wrong. We taught them the secular way of the world view. Why? Because that's what we were taught. Why? Because that's what my parents were taught. This thing is very generational. We were not taught the biblical worldview in that everything is created by God through Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ. And when it says everything, what does it mean? Everything. everything. Math is created by God. English is created by God. Sex among husband and wife is created by God. For God, for His purpose, to be used for His purpose, everything that is in life, everything that we are involved in, in life, is created by God. Solomon said there is absolutely nothing new under the sun. Everything has been done before. It is all God. 
Jesus. And he came to the final conclusion that the way I see it, the only thing left for us to do is to live, to honor, and glorify, and praise, and worship, and work for God the Father. To obey the commands of the Word. To find ourselves. And friends, that is what we have lost in the church. Who are we? And why are we who we are? I'm going to hold to that question till I go to the grave. It might be in five minutes. It might be in five years. But my friends, that's the question that needs to resonate in the heart of the church today because the church has forgot who they are. Amen? Amen? My generation, for the most part, was taught just like I was taught. The secular world view. And when you had time, you went to church. You went to church on Sunday, you went to church on Sunday night, you went to church on Wednesday, and the rest of the time you lived for the world according to the secular world view. You focused on doing everything the way the world wants you to do it. You focused on doing the things that you have to do in the world and you pushed God to the side. I'm telling you, that's the way we were raised and it was wrong. It was wrong. And I taught my boys the same way and I was wrong and I begged God to forgive me and I thanked God for the second chance to show them and to let them see, just like Miss Jean said, to be an example of a new way. We struggle and we, 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 we struggle to understand why is it that my children just don't believe the way I believe? Why is it that my children, they, they don't really, they question God and they, they wonder why and they, they come up with, why, why don't they just live by faith? I mean, that, you know, did you teach them? I mean, did you really get down and teach them that everything in life is created by God, for God, through Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. Is that what you taught in your home? Was there a steady diet of Bible in the home? There wasn't in my home. And I guarantee you, if we'll be honest before God and before ourselves, that it wasn't in your home. I guarantee you, the, I'm looking around at the generation that I'm looking at right now. Y'all were just like me. You went out, you were taught to work, work hard, make all you can make. On Sunday, go to church. On Sunday night, go to church. On Wednesday night, if you didn't have to work and didn't have a ball game, go to church. Come on, folks. Where do we start? Brenda said, where do we turn it around? We got to turn it around with prayer. We got to get real. We got to get real with prayer. We got to understand that our prayer is going to change our demeanor. Our prayer is going to change our focus. Our prayer is, like Daniel said, getting our focus, even our prayer focus on the reality of who God is and what He intends. And I'm going to tell you, King David teaches us, and if y'all if follow the devotions that I sent out a couple of weeks ago, it took me about two weeks to get this whole, that little series of devotions together because I'm going to tell you, the Lord was whooping me up on them from the end of Psalms 139. And man, then I got to looking even further into the Psalms. Have you ever considered how David prayed? I mean, David, David was bold. David didn't make no bones about it. David didn't tell God what to do. But David called on God and called God to, to do what he said he was going to do. In Deuteronomy chapter number 35, verse number 28, God the Father told the children of Israel through Moses, said, vengeance is mine. Don't you go out seeking vengeance. Let me take care of the vengeance. It kind of goes back to Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and I will take care of everything else behind it, including the vengeance. I'm going to tell you, my friends, how, how, how many of you are keeping up with current events? Are you, I've been challenging y'all. You've got to keep up with what's going on in the world. I'm telling you, it's happening so fast. And if you'll pay attention to what's going on in God's Word and what's going on in current events, you see, that, you see it picking up pace just like this. Snapping the foot just faster, faster, faster. It's happening. It's happening. And that's why we need that generation back in the church. And we've got to teach them, Carrie, you're right. 
We got to teach them. We got to help them to see and help them to understand that, my friends, we've got to get our focus. What's going on right now in current events? One of the biggest things that I saw on the news in just the last couple of days was the fact, let me preface it this way. How many of y'all were taught when you put food on your plate, you eat what you put on your plate? Huh? You didn't waste no food, right? We were raised, you don't waste food. You put it on your plate with your intent, you're going to eat it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've had a stuffed belly and had to be made, and, and my daddy made me eat what was on my plate because I took it out of the pot and put it on my plate. Okay? We don't waste. We were raised not to waste. And what's sitting off both coasts of our country right now? Come on. Come on. Cargo ships, thousands of them, filled with food and other items out there spoiling because they say there is a labor shortage that was created by the corruption that is going on in this government. And you sit there and say, oh, they're not bothering me. Let me tell you something. When the shelves get empty, yeah. you're going to know. One thing it should burden us and it should make us fall on our knees before God that we've allowed ourselves as a nation and as a church to allow our nation to get to the point that we depend that much on foreign entities when we got plenty of farmland right here in this nation and we've allowed our government to take a hold of it and ain't speaking up about it. Oh, I'm not saying again, again, oh, Clay, tickle me. He said, boy, preacher David sure did list a lot of guns the other Sunday, didn't he? Y'all remember that when he preached the other Sunday? I ain't talking about going to getting them guns. No, sir. I'm talking about learning how to pray. I'm talking about learning how to pray. My friends, if the people of God the true people of God who were called by the name of God, who are under the blood of the Son of God, my friends, if we'll learn how to pray, we'll see a change. We'll not only see a change in our nation, we'll see a change in our community. We'll not only see a change in our nation and in our community, we'll see a change in the church. Let me show you something. Turn to Psalms chapter number 139. We refer to Psalms while you're turning there. We refer to Psalms chapter 139 many, many, many times in the first, ver first 18 verses where King David says, you know, I go everywhere. No matter where I go, through the depths of the ocean, to the heights of the heavens, out in the woods and under the rivers or, wh you know, wherever I go, Lord, I can't get away from you. You're there and you're examining my heart. You know everything about me. You support me. You're my strength. All of these things. Then King David in verses number 13 through 18, he says, Lord, you knew me before I was even born. Lord, you knew me when I was in my mama's womb. You saw me and you you knit me together. You put me together and brought me into this world. But then he gets down to verse number 19. And boy, it just seems like David just, he's on a track and then all of a sudden he takes a right turn. And he cuts off and you say, wait a minute, David, where are you going? This ought to be another psalm. This should be Psalm 39.8. But no, let's put this thing in the context of everything that David just said up through verses number 18. Let's put it in the context and let's hear David from where he's coming from. Oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. If only you would destroy the wicked. When's the last time you got down on your knees and prayed, God, if only you would destroy the wicked. If only you would destroy the corruption. Get out of my life, you murderers. My friends, I'm going to tell you, you know, when, 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 I, was, when, when I was in the workplace and, and, and lost, but I had, a, I had a sense of what was right and wrong. You know, when I read that verse, I said, man, get out of my life, you murderers, and realizing that giving to certain entities through our, through our jobs, those entities support abortion, murder. Get out of my life, you murderers. I mean, it's made legal in this nation. You can go out and get a, a, an abortion and kill Kill, get out of my life. Lord, destroy the wicked. If only you would destroy the wicked. They blaspheme you. How do they blaspheme you? That's where we tie in the first 18 verses. They do not believe the first 18 verses of Psalms 139. They do not believe in the sovereignty of God, nor do they acknowledge the sovereignty of God. 
They do not believe in the omnipresence of God that he is everywhere present and that he is omniscient in that he is all knowing. They do not acknowledge the omnipresence, the omniscience or the omnipotence of an almighty God. They deny everything that King David says in verse number 18. And David words it this way, they blaspheme you. They do not believe you. They blaspheme you. They mock you. They ridicule you. They criticize and they persecute those who follow you, who lift up their lives before you. Your enemies misuse your name. Oh Lord, look at what he says. Look at what he says. We need to learn to pray this way, but we got to, I'm going to bring us to the place of where we got to understand something. Oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Miss Janet, I bet you taught your children not to hate, didn't you? Did, I mean, really, didn't you? And, and, and that's right. You know, we're not to hate one another because we don't fight against one another. We don't fight against flesh, but we don't hate one another. And King David is not praying for the eternal damnation of, the, of those who he's praying against. He's praying, Father, shouldn't I hate the things that they do? Yes, I do hate them. And God, I'm praying that you would destroy the wickedness that they are doing. Father, that you would bring a temporal judgment on those and make the revelation. Reveal it to the people so the people can see the wickedness. So they can see openly that blinders are removed from people and they can see for themselves what's going on. Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? My friends, we've got to learn how to pray. You want to see a change in this nation? You want to see a change in this church? You want to see a change in this community? Friends, we've got to learn how to get serious about our prayers. And like I say, now don't you take me out of context. Said The preacher said we're wasting our time praying for one another. No, we ain't wasting our time praying for one another. But, as, but when we're praying for one another, we need to get real about praying for the condition of our nation, the condition of our community, the condition of our church. Lord, shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? My friends, let me tell you, if you're putting other things before God the Father, now this is going to get close. Daniel, you're right. If we're allowing the distractions, we're allowing the distractions to, to, to start taking precedence out here in front of me, and we're chasing the distractions. You had to deal with Millie. I just heard you talking about it just a few minutes ago. Given a three or four hour thing to do on a Wednesday night. I'm sorry. We're teaching our children to go to church on Wednesday night. Okay? But the teachers, they can do their stuff another time. Praise God, we're going to serve God first. That's got to be the attitude. That's, got, that's what's got to change. That's got to be the attitude. Listen, listen. Yes, I hate them with a holy hatred. King David says, I hate them with a holy hatred. Somebody's going to jump up and they're going to say, maybe not from here, but we're recording this and I'm going to put it online. Somebody's going to jump up. Well, that's the Old Testament, preacher. Go to Romans chapter 12 for me, please. And please tell me that that's in the New Testament. Let's go to Romans chapter number 12. So King David said, I hate them with a holy hatred. I hate the things that they're doing. I hate the wickedness. I hate the corruption. Friends, we got to learn to hate it. Hate it to the point that we take it to the Lord. Not hate it to the point that we go pick up the 308. Hate it to the point. Now, for those of you that don't know, that's a rhyme. Hate it to the point that we get on our knees. Hate it to the point that we get on our knees. And we say, Lord, you told us not to be vengeful. And Lord, we pray for the salvation of those that Satan is using as his pawns. But Father, we pray for your holy judgment and your holy righteousness and your holy justification to come down on the wickedness and the corruption that they're doing. And Lord, that you would make, that you would draw out of darkness that, that you would draw into the light that which is in the darkness. Look at verse number nine. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. My friends, there is a such thing for the born-again child of God to have a holy hatred for that which is wrong. 
And I'm going to tell you, we got to get serious about the hatred. We got, to, we got to talk about it. We got to let other folks hear us talking about it. But friends, we got to talk about it in the context that we're talking about it here tonight. We got to talk about it in the context that we're leading other brothers and sisters in Christ to learn how to pray and get them to join what we're praying, to get them to join, to cry out to the Lord like King David is teaching us to cry out to the Lord for his vengeance to come on the scene and to bring his temporal judgment on those who are perpetrating the corruption that is happening all around us. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. I'm going to tell you, my friends, one of the things that we got to do in this holy hatred is we got to lift up one another. Now, we can't become, we can't begin in fighting with one another. One of the questions Frank asked me, and I'm, you know, I'm, y'all going to hear it, so there ain't no need me trying to hide it. One of the questions Frank asked me, now, Pastor, said, in your church, how are you dealing with those who have been vaccinated and those who have not been vaccinated? Y'all know how I answered it. I hope you do. It's your choice. And we're not going to fight one another over our choice. Over our right to choose. Over, you know, that's that's the bottom line. And I would hope if this thing were to come down to the place that they start coming door to door and saying, you ain't had your shot, you're going to get one. And I say, uh-uh, no, I'm not. That those that who, who even have had the vaccination would come alongside and say, no, that's his personal right. And you're not going to force yourself on them. Would we do that? Would we guard one another's personal right? Would we guard it? Listen. Listen. We got to understand. We can't be fighting among ourselves. We don't need to be challenging anyone. That is your personal choice and that is what your pastor has said from the get-go. And he'll not change that position. But he will not. And he will speak up against. And he will call onto the floor. If he finds out that there has been a challenge, that there has been a challenge against somebody that has hurt somebody, because friends, we don't fight against one another. Because if we start that, Satan's won. If we start that, Satan, the media's, man, I want to get up. I'm sorry, y'all want to get up so bad I can't stand it. <laughs> the media. And I go, good, thank you, Lord. I just knew I was going to be out of time. The media has tried race. They've tried everything under the sun to divide people. And this is the new division. They're pawns of Satan because Satan wants the division. When he can get the division, he can stifle any part of unity whatsoever. We've got to learn how to pray. And we've got to learn how to love. And we've got to learn how to forgive. And we've got to learn to go and ask for forgiveness. Personally, face to face, and ask for forgiveness. The, Jesus Christ himself taught us when you sit, when you kneel down to pray, if you know that somebody has ought against you, you get up from your prayer and you go. And you make that ought right. Because you want me to tell you something? According to Isaiah chapter number 59, verses 1 through 3, if you don't, his ears stopped up and his arms shortened and your prayers hit the ceiling and that's far as they go. As far as you go. Listen, I'm sharing with you tonight how we got to pray. We got to get real and we got to commit to one another in the unity of this fellowship to begin praying in this type of manner not just over the corruption and wickedness. Let me share with you something. Let me share with you something. Let me get back to where I was going. Let me get back to where I was going. It says, I hate them with a holy hatred. They blaspheme you. They misuse your name. If folks are going out claiming to be born again children of God, but they never come in and worship the Lord. They don't adhere to the, to the commands of God in their life. 
They claim to be born again children of God, but they're shacking up. They claim to be born again children of God, but they're living in the world. They claim to be this, they claim to be that, but they are not living up to the letter of the law of God as we're supposed to, as born again children of God. Are they not doing the same, very same thing? Are they not misusing the name of God? So we want to put our little twist on that and say, oh, they're out there cussing. That ain't what David's talking about. They're misusing their call. The Israelites, the people that David was talking about, they said, oh yeah, we're children of Abraham. What did Jesus tell them in John chapter number 8? Your father is the devil. Oh, you may be the biological offspring from the lineage of Abraham, but you are not the children of Abraham's faith. Your father is the devil. And you're misusing the name of God the Father when you do not honor His name with your life. Oh, does that change a little bit about how we look at what's going on in the church today? Oh, your pastor's serious tonight now, and you need to get serious. We need to get serious. We need to get down and serious about the Word. My friends, we've got to start with prayer. It begins with prayer. It begins by us knowing how to pray. We've got to learn how to pray and pray right. Not pray these little comfort prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. Should I die before I wake? I pray the Lord my soul to take. There's nothing wrong with that prayer. And that's how we teach children to understand that God is in control of their lives. But good gracious, let's build a little bit more on that. That He's not only the God over your sleep if you die in your sleep, He's the God over your life when you're up and in the world. Look at, now let's get into what King David said. So we're talking about fervent, serious, God calling prayer. God moving prayer. God, we pray that you would move in your vengeance against the oppression, against the corruption, against the, all the, that are, is opposing your name, against those that are claiming evil to be good and good to be evil, and they're coming against us and calling us evil who are trying to do good. Oh, I'm going to tell you, my friend. I don't know if I'll live to see it, but as pastors come, and come in the future, they will, if I do not, that as they speak out against the atrocities of this land, I'm going to tell you right now, just what I'm praying right now, just what I'm teaching you to pray right now, could be counted as hate speech against the leadership of this nation. Though they could twist it right into lead, to preaching hate speech against the nation. Oh, you're praying for God to condemn us and send us to hell. No, I'm not. I'm praying for God to bring His judgment down on you. And I'm saying that to your face. My friends, we've got to get serious. We've got to get serious. People are saying, oh, preacher, you know the shells ain't nothing. I'm going to tell you, you wait. You wait. Modi told me a while ago, he said, preacher, said, I'm already seeing. You go into grocery stores and you see bare shelves. Yes, sir. Hold on, give Janet a microphone, please. Yes, the folks online want to hear what you got to say. Green, Bill. Okay. Um, in Luke 12, too, I always, it, it talks about hypocrisy. And, you know, that's all you hear on the television about hypocrisy from both sides. But uh, in there he says that eventually all the evil will be open for everybody. Absolutely. The Lord's going to expose it all. And I pray for that, but we have to have patience because it's going to be in his time, not in our time. Oh, yes. And then we've got to look at our own selves and think, well, now if I want all the evil <laughs> exposed, I've got to make sure I And that's where I'm myself. about to go to. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Miss Janet. And you are so right. And you are so right. And also that same, that's Math, uh, Matthew quotes that same segment of Jesus in Matthew chapter number 20, 10. He quotes that same section. Matthew does that. That everything that is in darkness will be brought to light. Look at verses number 23. Verse number 23 and 24. And I'm going to bring us to a close.
Because when we get down and we begin praying this way, when we begin praying this way, when we begin really getting fervent and serious with our prayers, when we begin to bond together and bind together and begin to pray in this way, we've got to do what King David said and like what Miss Janet just was about to say. And King David said, Now Lord, search me. Oh God, and know my heart. Is my heart right? Lord, I'm praying your word. I'm praying what you said. Lord, you said for me not to take vengeance. And, 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 and we know that King David, he had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity against Saul. He had opportunity after opportunity. He could have even taken care of his own son who rose up against him and, and caused an insurrection. King David had all of these opportunities. But you know, King David learned a lesson early on in his kingship with a, through, a, through a, a, a woman's husband and the woman that he committed adultery with and that he had the man murdered, he learned something that God will reveal your sin. That judgment will come, Miss Janet. God will reveal your sin. God will show it. And the King David, so as he's praying this prayer, he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Lord, you know I'm anxious about this and I'm angry about this, but am I angry in the right way? Lord, I'm not sinning, am I? Lord, I want to make sure that I'm going about this with a righteous holiness. Lord, a hatred, the kind of hatred that you have, the kind of hatred that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, had. And he says, point out anything in me that offends you. And that's exactly what we've got to, my friends, when we're praying before the Lord with these kinds of fervent prayers. Oh, we've got to walk the line, as Miss, as, as, as Miss Jean said, we need to be showing the example. We need to be teaching the example. We need to be giving the example. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. We've got to be led along a path. You must first, you must first know the path. To be led on the path, you've got to know the path. And that means we've got to get in God's Word, and we've got to teach God's Word, and we've got to show God's Word. We've got to be in everything, just like I said, even in everything, in all education, in everything that we do. You teachers, and that's not a slam on y'all. Y'all are handicapped. Y'all work under an entity of government-controlled education where you are handicapped. You know the truth. You know that God is in the sight. You know that God is in the math, that God is in the health, that God is in the, in the language. God created it all, but you cannot say anything about it. You're handicapped or you'll lose your job. My friends, how can we trust something like that? That's so handicapped, that goes against. It, 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 proves, it proves the point that the entity that is controlling our education system does not believe verses 1 through 18. They do not believe it. They deny it and reject it and will not allow it to be taught. They do not hold to the truth. My friends, we've got to learn how to pray about many things, but we've got to learn how to pray right about these things. We've got to get in front of God and we've got to say, Lord, just look at, look at, chapter, look at chapter 140. Ellen, if you want to roll right on over to verse number 1 of 1 4. Oh Lord, rescue me from evil people. Protect me from those who are violent. Those who plot evil in their hearts. I'm going to tell you, my friends, it sickens me to know that thousands upon thousands of ships are off of both coasts waiting to be unloaded of good. And I heard a newscaster my good foods out there. Shelves are becoming empty. Just like Jeff said in England, it's going to be the same way right here. And the newscaster had the audacity and the gall to say, well, you better order your Christmas presents early. That shows you the mentality of this world. It is sick and devoid of God in any fashion whatsoever. My friends, we've got to get right in our prayers. And we're going to move on from there. But I want you to join me tonight. I want you to join me tonight 
as we call out to the God as King David did, O oh Lord, rescue me. Friends, you may not feel that you're oppressed right now, but I challenge you to take a good, hard look at what's happening in this world and in this nation. Who caused the labor shortage? Why do we not have these goods coming in? What is happening? What have we allowed to be taken away from us? Our ability to work. Our ability to, to go out and to, 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 to do what we need to do. Our ability to teach the truth of God's Word. To teach the real truth, not teach religion. Oh, I tell you, the, 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 the government keeps, oh, we can't allow religion. I ain't talking about no religion. I'm talking about a relationship. I'm talking about the truth. The only truth. The truth that has stood the test of time above any other false God that is out there. The true God of the Bible. We've got to call out to Him. Lord, rescue me from evil people. Protect me from those who are violent. Those who would plot evil in their hearts and stir up trouble all day long. Their tongues sting like a snake. The venom of the viper drips from their lips. Oh, Lord, keep me out of the hands of the wicked. And on it goes. And psalm after psalm after psalm, King David is praying, God, you intervene with your vengeance. Oh, yes, Miss Janet, you're so right. We must be patient. And we must keep on, Daniel, keeping our focus on God the Father, even when the shelves do become empty. Even when, even when the gas pumps run dry. Even when the power is shut off and the cell towers stop transmitting and the internet cannot be reached and wells or the water lines run dry and the home becomes filled with terror and children hear you and they understand things are just not right and they begin to get scared. Can we say, can we say as Habakkuk Say it in chapter number 3. Even then, even then, I will look for my joy through the sovereign Lord, my salvation. Friends, is that where our focus truly is? I'm going to tell you, it's coming a time when Clemson football and South Carolina football don't matter. It's coming. It's coming a time when that's going to be the furthest thing from your mind. You ain't going to give a rip what goes on because you ain't got no food to put on your table. Oh, the reality is coming, folks. And we've got to teach our children. And we've got to get them prepared. And we've got to teach our families. And we've got to get them prepared. But it begins with us learning how to pray and teaching them how to pray. Any final comments? I want a few minutes late. Any final comments tonight? I'm going to hush. Who's got a word they want to share? No one? We live in a world where apathy is, if it doesn't affect us, who cares? And that's where we are. We're letting an evil government control and destroy everything that we live and have built up in our lives. If any of you hadn't seen that so-called infrastructure bill that's coming up, you better look at it and you better get on the phone. Amen. We've got a, a president who is going to charge us a mileage tax. <clears throat> well, that ain't that much. Uh, if you drive 26,000 miles a year, at the end of the year, you're going to owe $2,100 just for driving your vehicle. They've also got something slid in there that nobody else knows about, a tax on animals. $6,300 tax on a milk cow. If you own a milk cow, per cow, $6,300. $2,600 per cow for beef cows. $500 tax per hog. Now, you think the grocery store 
grocery shelves are empty now. Let me tell you something. I don't own any cows, okay? I don't know where they came from. I am not paying that tax, okay? They just drove by and somebody put them out in my pasture. But, but this, is, this is the evil that we're fighting. And this is the very evil that you're talking about right here because this administration wants to do everything they can to take God out of our society. And it's showing up in our churches. It's like you say, Daniel summed it up quick. It, other distractions are causing people to stay away from the church. And it's nothing but apathy. And it's, it's you know, going to church, we can call it a habit if we want to, but I know we've talked about it before in our Sunday school class. If you miss one Sunday, it should bother you. If you miss two Sundays, some people say, well, I've already missed two, and the third one ain't gonna hurt. That's where we are. When all this stuff came about, all this virus, people said, well, I'm gonna stay away because I don't want it to affect me. And that's where we are. And we've got to get back to what you were talking about just now. And when people start coming back to church and when people start giving their faith in their maker instead of in some type of material good, that's when we'll see a change. Amen. Thank you, Rod. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Folks, I know we've got a good number tonight. I hope it continues. Because this is going to continue. We're just going to sidestep from Samuel right now. I think Samuel actually set us up for this. I really do. I really do. I think First Samuel actually set us up for this. We saw in in Samuel in 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 first in the first few chapters of Samuel, we saw the Lord leading us to this time right here. And and um they stopped trusting in God. I see it. That's it. That's it. And friends, you know, I pray that that we can see a turnaround, not just in our fellowship here, but in the church, the true church as a whole, the true Bible believing, God fearing, God teaching church. Is God the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Yes, he is. Will he allow his children today, who is us, through the blood of Jesus Christ, that we're grafted in to the family of God alongside the Jew? Will he allow us to endure and go through the same things that he allowed them to go through to get their attention turned back to him? I absolutely believe he will. I absolutely believe he will. But even then, the truly apathetic will be separated from those who were just <coughs> stepped off the path if we want to give them that privilege. All right, guys, I'm done. Please grab a hold of what was shared tonight. Get into to Psalms and listen to David pray. That's one of the best examples of prayer that we have in God's Word is listening to David's examples of how he prayed in the Psalms. And let it guide our lives. Let it guide our lives. To pray this way means that we've got to get ourselves, as Miss Janet said, we've got to get ourselves in line. We've got to make sure we're toeing the line. We've got to speak the truth. We've got to teach our children the truth. And we've got to do everything that God's Word has called for us to do and listen to the commands and follow them diligently and open our mouths. Pray and open our mouths witnessing and sharing with others. All right, guys, let's stand and be dismissed. Thank you all for your attention tonight. Folks online, thank you for joining us tonight.